Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight Outta Boston here, and today I'm back for episode number 19 of my 1998 Tampa Bay Devil Race series here on OOTP16. So today we're back with the 2003 playoffs. We've wrapped up the regular season. We won a franchise record 108 games, and we won the division by 18 games. Second place Toronto had uh, 90 wins, so they have 18 game margin. We finished with the best record in the bigs. Second best was Seattle with 98 wins, so we were a whole 10 games better than them. And third place was 91 wins, so we really uh, were, by a wide margin, the best team in the league this year, which was pretty cool. Um, we can take a look at some of the final stats uh, for some of our players. We'll go to lineups. So let's see, Jason Veritek finished with an 807 OPS, 4.2 wins above replacement. So he had a pretty nice second half, it looks like. Um, got his war up around 4, you know, it's... Pretty good for a contract here. I think even if we don't, if we aren't the team to re-sign him, he's definitely going to cash in this offseason. Um, Michael Hart finished 663 OPS, 0.7 war. Man, he has been kind of a disappointment, to be honest. But um, he's got, let's see, a year, two years left of team control. I don't know. He could be a trade candidate. I mean, he really has been a disappointment. He had, that, he had this one good year. But other than that, he just has been kind of a zero at the plate. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um... As for the rest of the team, Eric Hinsky finished the year <laughs> kind of how he started it hot. He got his OPS up over 1,000, uh, 7.3 wins above replacement, 40 home runs. What a year for this guy. Unbelievable. <laughs> even I, Honestly, even I didn't expect he would be this good. Um, and we'll see if maybe he regresses a little bit next year. But guy's been a beast, so hard to complain. Um, Scott Rowland finished the year out. Let's see, 761 OPS, 3.2 wins above replacement. So his bounce back year... Didn't quite turn out to be that full bounce back year. I mean, he was better than he was the last couple of years. OPS was higher. His war was higher. You know, he was an above average hitter for the first time in a couple of years, according to OPS+. Plus, He got his home runs at the 20. So, you know, he did improve a little bit. But, I mean, he struggled enough in the second half that it was still kind of not what we're looking for out of the guy. But, no more Garcia Part, 858 OPS, 4.4 wins above replacements. He has got two more years left on his contract. So, probably not, you know, not quite peak Nomar, of course, but I mean, it's really hard to complain about a guy who produces like that, so, uh, Canerco finished here kind of cold, but, you know, did what Canerco does, he had 30 homers, OPS over 860, four and a half wins above replacement, Ken Griffey Jr. had a monster year at the dish, 32 homers, 4.2 wins above replacement as a DH, that is pretty impressive right there, to accumulate that much war as a DH is pretty hard to do, um, Juan Marquis had a really horrible year. Uh, Lionel, let's check his splits, see if they are still kind of just the righty-lefty thing. Yeah, so it's still just, he just got too many ABs against righties for the numbers to look good. Um, and Sepulveda finished out the year pretty well, so that platoon's still looking pretty well, or still looking pretty good. Randy Wynn, 800 OPS, 3, or 4.2 wins above replacement, so a nice year out of him. He's a free agent at the end of the year. He spent, uh, all six of his seasons with us. He was, uh... He was there when the uh, when the Rays or when the Devil Rays uh, the organization began. He had 25 triples. Holy smokes! That, that's that's got to be some sort of record. 25. I can't I'm, I can't remember anyone ever having 25 triples in a season. I don't know. All right. Um. So that is that. As for the rotation, uh. So let's see. Manny Domingo, Chris Benson, Tony Saunders. So Hudson finished the year 309 ERA. Um, Benson, let's see, how do they do with us down the stretch? 413 ERA and 11 starts. So not quite what we're looking for, but 2.9 wins above replacement. So he must, uh, yeah, his bad was 355. So the peripherals look pretty good on him. Um, and really, you know, whether or not this turned out to be a good trade is not, it's not going to be about what he did in the final two months uh, for us. It's going to be about what he does in October because ultimately we would have, we would have won the division without Benson. Uh, it's really just about, you know, what he's going to do in these next, you know, three, four, five starts or whatever it's going to take to, to try and bring another World Series home to Tampa Bay. So honestly, I, I'm not even going to like, you know, you could probably say, oh, you kind of give up a lot for a guy with a 413 area down the stretch, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's all going to be about what he does in, in, the, in the next month. Um, Zito, I think he went pitcher of the month in like August. I don't really know how, but uh, he kind of struggled this year. Wasn't his best. Saunders had a down year. Domingo was better than he was last year, I guess, but still kind of would like to see a little bit more out of him. Uh, but the bullpen was really good this year. It's definitely the strength of our team. Ned had 46 saves. Rivera was really good in that setup role. He'll probably uh, transition into the closer role next year if we pick up his option. Um, I think he's got a five, yeah, $5 million team option. We'll probably pick that up the way he's been pitching. Um, I, I guess his uh, peripherals weren't that great this year, but still the ERA is kind of hard to deny. So we'll probably pick up that option. Um, we'll worry about that in the offseason. But yeah, Nen had a really good year. Gonzalez pitched 107 innings. Holy smokes. He wasn't even up the whole year, but wow. He pitched 107 innings out of the bullpen. That is insane. But he was really good. 
Uh, Neil had a good year. Sadler, all these guys had good years. I mean, really hard to complain. Even Madsen came up at the end and, and pitched pretty well. So, all right. Um, as for the playoff rotation, who are we gonna bump? This is kind of the uh, the tough question. Um, I think it's gonna be down. It's gonna be between two guys, Saunders and Zito. And I think um, I don't know. Let, let me look at the postseason track record. Uh, let's see postseason so Saunders he was really good last year in the postseason he was a big part of why we won that World Series after Hudson went down and I really I think Zito pitched pretty well in the postseason too I mean I, I think our entire staff was pretty good last year uh, after Zito went down let's see yeah 261 so both guys pitched well last year it's kind of hard I mean and he's a career 180 ERA in the postseason in five starts I don't know it's I think it's got to be between one of those two guys to, to bump from the rotation though. I mean Domingo maybe it could be Domingo I don't know though. It's just kind of a tough call. I mean, we have five good starters. He was really good in the postseason too last year. It's a bad. I mean, the bad up was low, but still, it's. I don't know. I mean, it's not going to be Hudson. It's not going to be Benson. So I don't know. All right. Well, we know what our one-two is going to be: Hudson, Benson, and then. Man, I don't know past that. I guess we'll figure it out when we get there. But all right, so we're taking on the Cleveland Indians in the first round of the playoffs. We can take a look at how they did this year. So they won, I think, 91 games, and they won their division. Kind of struggled in the second half. Um, remember, they got off to a really good start and then sort of regressed a little bit in the second half. But uh, we played this team in the past, and we know that they are anchored by their starting staff, Pedro Martinez. Kind of a down year for him, a 401 ERA. And wow, the war was down. Um, let's see, was it the, I guess his home runs were up. I don't know. It didn't seem like he really was that much worse. I mean, the... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The home runs were way up. Holy smokes. 43 home runs. So that's why. Hmm. So that's interesting. I don't know. Sometimes those kind of things can be random. Sometimes they're not. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how he does in this postseason. Uh, but they still have Bartolo Colon, who's another one of the best pitchers in the game. 319 ERA. Pretty good stuff out of him. Not really a high strikeout guy, but he really never was in real life anyway. Um... And then as for the lineup, Troy Gloss, Brad Fulmer, Richie Sexton, Felix Tovar, Kenny Lofton, uh, Jose Offerman, Jay Bell. So some, some some names you recognize there. They got Rafael Soriano in the bullpen. Rafael Betancourt is this Mike Williams. Yes, it is. The man is he? Yeah, he allowed the home run to Joe Carter. Uh, Ramiro Mendoza. Wow. Paul Quantrill, Casey Fossum. So some interesting names there. Um, and let's see, they were tied for 6th and runs scored, 4th and runs again. So kind of a balanced team. They didn't really excel in either category. Uh, their Pythagorean win loss was only 88 and 74. But uh, this team has made the playoffs the last yeah, the last 8 years. And uh, they won the championship in 1999. So they're definitely a force to be reckoned with. They're definitely a team... Uh, they're definitely a team that's going to give us, I think, all we can handle. So, All right, so I'm glad I caught this before I started up, but um, Tim Hudson is actually not fully rested for Game 1. I mistakenly used him in the last game of the regular season. That was really stupid. <laughs> um, I wish I had been a little bit more aware of that when it happened. So, All right, we're going to have to set up a rotation a little bit differently then. I think Benson is going to be fully rested, though, so he can go Game 1. Hudson probably can't go before Game 3, so uh, I think we'll go with... Hmm... Man, I think we got to go with Saunders in game two. I mean, he's just, I know, I mean, he struggled last year too when he was big in the postseason. I just think he's got that, I don't know. I, I think we're going to go with him in game two, though. But, uh, all right. Call me crazy. I don't know if that's really going to be a good move or not, but I think it's kind of a crapshoot at this point. So, all right, here we go. Game number one. Chris Benson's going to be on the mound, making his first start for the Tampa Bay Rays, or for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in the postseason. And, all right, let's get to it. Game one from the trop. Bartolo Colon versus Chris Benson, the trade deadline acquisition. He surrenders a run in the first. It's a 1-0 lead for Cleveland through three. And we finally get our first hit, but Bartolo is dealing right now. All right, we got a run back. There we go. Tie game through five. Benson at 72 pitches. Gets through the sixth. Should be good for the seventh as well. And he is. All right, so seven innings, a one-run ball. Love that. Great start for Chris Benson. He's going to be done. Let's get Mariano up. Mariano. All right. And bottom half of the seventh. Nothing going there. So I'll bring Mariano in and we'll get Rob Nen up. And let's see. Mariano, can you get us through the eighth? Yes, he can. All right. Betancourt's on for the Indians. Let's see. All right. Randy went a little two out double, looks like, or maybe a single and he moved up or something. I don't know. He's got up to second base, though, with two outs for Eric Kinski, looking for his first hit of the day. 
Let's see, kicks and deals. Wild pitch! Kim heads after it, but Wynn is going to get to third, so now the go-ahead run is just 90 feet away. Excuse me, as I belch into the mic there. But all right, here we go. Eric Hinsky, 295 with runners in scoring position this year. Let's see what he can do. Hinsky tries to check his swing. The appeal, that is strike three, and we are headed to the ninth. Still knotted up at one. All right, let's get Rob Nen in there then. The shutdown closer we got from San Francisco a year ago. He's very big in the postseason for us last year. Oh, and he surrenders a run. Yikes, that is bad. A solo home run to Brad Fulmer. Darn. Let's see. What what did Nen do in the postseason last year? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, he was pretty pretty good for us. One run in five innings, four saves, five appearances. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's return to the game. Ooh, he was on the '97 Marlins too. I never noticed. I never knew that. But all right. Um. All right. Bottom of the ninth. Now we need a run. Let's go batter by batter. Paul Canarco do up first. He's gonna face Rafael Soriano, the closer for this Indians team. Three four nine ERA this year. Thirty three saves. The 1-1 one, one swung on hardliner out to left center. Lofton races back on the track. It's out of here. Paul Canerco with a game-tying solo home run. 400 feet. And this game is knotted up at two. All righty. Let's get someone up then. Um, assuming, let's see, yeah, Nen through 12 pitches. Um, we might leave him back out there for the 10th. I don't know. We'll see. We might at least have him start the 10th if we get there, but all right. Let's see if we can maybe end the game here. Come on, Ken Griffey Jr. Can you go back to back on him? The 0-2. Yep, didn't. Okay. Struck out swinging. Now it's Scotty Rollins' turn. 0 for 3 tonight. The pitch, strike 3. Rollins thought it was outside, but it caught the corner. 2 down now for Sepulveda. Can he just get on base here? 1 for 3 today with a double. 2 gone in the ninth. Soriano winds up the pitch. Sepulveda swings. Ground ball up the middle for a base hit. All right. So we get something going here. Now it's Veritek's turn. He's behind in the count 0-2, though. Swung on, lifted to left, Sexton retreats to the track, he reaches up, can't make the catch, Sepulveda to third, oh baby, we're sending him, come on Sepulveda, the throw home, it's over with the relay, the tag, he's out at the plate, oh man, Sepulveda's gun down at the dish, and we are headed to extras, wow, what a dramatic start to this postseason, alright, let's leave Nen in there, um, let's get someone up though just in case. Maybe Sadler, because he was having such a good end of the year. Um, but we've got plenty of candidates here. All right, we'll get Sadler up, though. Especially if you get these lefties at the top of the lineup coming up. All right, let's leave. Uh, let's go until Renaton scoring position for Nen. All right, and he gets through it, so I like that. Oh, he do. Yikes, did he get hurt? Oh, no. He got hurt, didn't he? Because Gonzalez had to come in. Oh, I really hope Rob Nen didn't get hurt. Oh, God. What is it? Oh, God. Yikes. Please, please don't be hurt. Please. I, 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 I mean, the bullpen's been very good this year, but I think we might need Rob Nett if we're going to make a deep playoff run. I don't know. All right. Bottom of the tenth now. We've got a chance to end this game. Come on, Michael Hart. Get things started for us. The count is 2-1. and one. The wind up the pitch. Hart swings. Ripped a short left. It's a base hit. Hart with the wide turn. He's going to head to second. It's a leadoff double. All righty. Let's do this. Come on, Randy Wynn. Let's just move him over. Don't strike out here. The pitch. Wynn swings. Line drive down the left field line. Sexton goes after it. He slides. Can't get to it. That's going to bow to the corner. Here comes Hart. The throw to third. Okay, I don't know why they're going to third, but whatever. We win. <laughs> Randy Wynn with the walk-off triple. Alrighty, what a dramatic game. A come-from-behind victory in Tampa. Takes game one by a final score of 3-2. to two. Whew, What a game. What a game. All right, let's hope Rob Nen's not hurt too badly. Come on, is he going to give us a diagnosis? Nope, diagnosis pending. He's still out, though. It's not good. All right, game number two. We're going to have uh, our man, Tony Saunders, on the mound against Pedro Martinez. This is a game Cleveland has to win. If they look at this pitching matchup, they have to win this. Unless they're not. Oh, no, they're going slow and hard. All right, they're not going with Pedro. I guess, is he not fully rested? Yeah, he's not fully rested. All right. So Pedro's going to get matched up against Hudson in game three, then, it looks like. That'll be interesting. But all right, let's do this. Game number two. Let's just get back to Tampa. All right, here we go. Game number two. Sloan Hart versus Tony Saunders from the Trop. Um, let's see. I kind of want to bump Roland down in the lineup. Yeah, let's move. Let's swap him in Veritech. All right, do that. Here we go. Game number two from the Trop. Oh, a three spot for Cleveland in the first. Not a good start for Saunders. 
Oh, a six spot for Tampa in the second, though. All right, so now Saunders has a lead to work with, and it's a four-run lead now. He's starting to settle on, it looks like. 75 pitches, though. All right, four runs. Uh, 102 pitches. All right, his day is going to be done. Let's go with... Um. All right, well, we know Mariano's going to close. I think Gonzalez will probably take the eighth. Let's get Sadler up. Maybe you can use him... No, we, we could probably go inning by inning. We'll see. All right, so Sadler on for the sixth. All right, gets through that, no problem. Um, now maybe we go with Blaine Neal for the seventh. Let's see, 290 FIP. I'm kind of tempted to go with Madsen, though. He was so dominant by the end of the year. I think we'll go with Madsen. He looked really good in uh, September. All right, here we go. Let's bring in Ryan Madsen. Then we'll get uh, we'll get Gonzalez up later. Hold up. All right, perfect seventh. We don't know that for sure, but... <laughs> If you don't allow a run, it's perfect in my book. Um, all right, Gonzalez on for the eighth. They're up. Now we'll bring him in for the eighth. And let's get Mariano up. Here we go. All right, allowed a couple of hits, but no runs. And Mariano, Mariano on for the ninth. And there it is. We win game number two. That was a bullpen game right there. Really impressive stuff. That is awesome to have. I've talked about it in this series before. If you've watched uh, these episodes for a while... You would know, I think having a bullpen in the postseason is very, very important, having a good bullpen at that, and this turned into a bullpen game, and it paid out, It paid off that we have such a good bullpen, because look at that, four four scoreless innings, four hits allowed, what is that, seven strikeouts to one walk, excellent stuff, excellent, excellent stuff there, and now we've got Hudson ready for game three, that uh, could not have gone more perfect. Alrighty, we've got a 2-0 series lead. Can we sweep Cleveland? I know, I I can't rem I, like. I wish I could recall each time we've played Cleveland in the postseason. Oh, man. Hamstring strain. How are you out for two to three months with a hamstring strain? What? Oh, man, are you serious? That is disappointing. Wow. All right, well, I think Rob Nett's probably throwing his last pitch as a uh, Tampa Bay Ray. Double Ray, because I'm not paying him, uh, well... Uh, maybe I'll pay him $8 million a year. I'll consider it. I mean, I like having this good bullpen, I gotta say. We'll consider it. All right, let's do this. Uh, game number three, can we close out the series? I think we've swept Cleveland in the past. I don't remember, like, how many times. But I know we've swept, swept them, like, at least once. So, all right, here we go. Game number three, Tim Hudson versus Pedro. This is the marquee pitching matchup that I'm sure everyone wants to see. Um, let's see. Tampa lineup. Yep, we'll swap these two again. And we'll leave it at that. All right, here we go. Game number three, Pedro versus Timmy. Let's see. This should be a pitcher's duel. We get the first run, though. Oh, yikes, a three spot off of Pedro. Now Hudson's got a lead. All right, he gives up a pair, but we still got a two-run lead. Nice, we get it back to four. Yikes, Hudson, not his best stuff today, apparently. Uh, but he is at 83 pitches. He should give us at least one more inning. Um, although, the way our bullpen's going right now, and we just had the off day... Well, if he can give us the six, I, I'd like that. Oh, yikes, he gave up a run, though. Man, that was not Tim Hudson's best stuff. But all right, it's going to be a bullpen game again, and we're going to go with the same formula, Madsen, Gonzalez, and uh, Rivera. That is going to be our 7-8-9 for the time being. All right, let's see it. Can we get an insurance run? Nope. All right, bullpen's going to have to be perfect tonight, it looks like. Let's see it. Madsen on for the seventh. Oh, and he gives up a run. Damn. Let's say it was... A single by Lofton, and then I guess he stole second and scored on a single. Wow. All right. So, I, I guess, I mean, kind of hard to pin that on Mats in a pair of singles. He usually doesn't score a run, but... Uh, ooh, and Gonzalez is wiped, it looks like. I don't know if we're going to be able to use him. Um, let's get Sadler up, then. All right, top eight. Nothing going there. Bottom eight. Let's get Sadler in. Oh, and he gives up the... Damn it, man. Two-run homer. Oh, okay. Bullpen did not really uh, feel like showing up today, apparently. Let's get Mariano up in case this game goes to the ninth. But it will not. Cleveland takes home game three, so there will not be a sweep. Pedro not his best stuff, but Williams and Soriano locked it down. They got the lead. That was the difference. It was a tie game. Or it wasn't a tie game, and we had the lead after the starters came out, but their bullpen outpitched out our bullpen, so they got the win. But all right, 
Uh, so now we've got game number four. This is where it starts to get uh, kind of tricky as to who we're going to pitch. Domingo or Zito? I think we're going to go with Zito. I mean, I know Domingo was so good in the postseason last year, though. Man, this is so tough. It's a very, very tough choice. I think we're going to go with Zito, though. A little bit more experience. I have a little bit more faith in him having a good start. Just a little bit. But all right, let's see it. Game number four. It is uh, winner go home for Cleveland. Not quite that situation yet for Tampa, but it's getting there. It would uh, not be fun to have to go back for the trap for a game set for a game five. All right, and should we drop Hinsky in the lineup? I mean, he has been nothing this series. Uh, really, we really haven't gotten any production out of our left-handed hitters. Um, I don't really know if there's much we can do about it. Who's Cleveland starting? They're going Colonia. Yeah, they are going Colonia. All right, so Zito's gonna have to be on his A game. Let's see it. Game number four from Jacobs Field in Cleveland. Ooh, all right, we get the first run there in the third. Zito only one hit allowed through four. Good stuff so far. Bartolo's pitching pretty well, though. Zito's going to have to match him. Oh, a three spot in the sixth for Cleveland. Oh, boy, this is getting stressful now. Um, 98 pitches. I say he's got 75 stamina. He might start the next thing at least. I don't know. I wish I could look at Cleveland. Oh, okay, they have Offerman up. They got. Mm. Hmm. All right. Let's get. Um. We won't get anyone up quite yet. All right. Runner on second. Rowan gets the second. It looks like he got a double there. Come on, Michael Hart. Do something. Lined in a short center. Lofton digging hard. He won't get there. That's a base hit. Come on, Roland. All right, he's going to stop at third. So first and third. Double play ball is... Uh, or What am I trying to say here? Uh, Cleveland could definitely use a double play ball here, but let's see. Hopefully Randy Wynn is going to be too fast for it. The one-strike pitch. Wynn swings. Lays hard on the ground towards second. Oh, no, 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 no. No! Come on, man. The one thing we couldn't have there. Ugh. <sighs> All right, so let's uh, we'll start the inning with Zito. Let's get um, get Blaine Neal up. He hasn't pitched yet in the postseason. All right, Zito. Oh yikes! Things are falling apart quickly here. Let's get Neal in. And we're just gonna go half inning. It's like peeling the bandaid. All right, give up one run. Um, how many pitches do he throw? Sixteen. All right, we should get him out of there then. Let's use J.C. Romero, because I think this game is just about out of hand. I don't see us. Okay, we got a pair on. Come on, Veritech, time for a big hit. Wild pitch. All right, that's going to get a run home. Still, we could use a big hit here. Single could uh, make it a one-run game. Oh, they got Mendoza in. Man, he was horrible this year. <laughs> come on, Veritech. Get off the schneid. Line down the right field line. Base it. Come on, Griffey, come home. Yes, sir. All right, it's a one-run game. I think it's time to get Mariano up for the eighth. Actually, we should get the... Let's get... Let's get Mike Gonzalez up. That would be the man. That there would be the man. All right. Uh, come on, Sepulveda. So it's a man on first. Hmm. I'm pondering pinch running here, but two outs, I'm not sure it's worth it. So just let Sepulveda hit. Over through tonight. Let's see. From the stretch, the pitch. Sepulveda swings. He slaps a ground ball towards second. Bell's got to throw to first in time. Oh, skips through the dirt. Dug out night. Okay. All right. Well, we get a pair back. So let's see. Can we hold him in the eighth? Gonzalez is not quite ready yet, but we're going to bring him in anyway. He got the win in game one, I think. All right. Gets through the eighth. And alright, we'll get Mariano up in case we force a bottom of the ninth here, but we've got to get a run home. It's going to be Scott Rowland leading things off against Rafael Soriano. Two earned runs and two innings so far for Soriano. But Rowland's behind one and two. Swings, fly ball to center, loft and back on, and he's there. One down. Michael Hart's turn now. He is one for two today with a walk. Swung on flare to right. Buchanan has got it two down. Randy Wynn is the last hope. 0 for 4 tonight, the 0-2, wind swings, grounded hard, right side, bell digs it out there to first, in the... Oh, it sails by Fulmer, all right, win gets the second. So just like that, on a, on a routine play that should have ended the game, 
Now one of the best contact hitters in baseball, Nomar Garcia Parra, has got a chance to tie the game up with the tying run in scoring position. Come on, Nomar. Time for a big hit. Three for four tonight. The one-one swing by Garcia Parra. Hit on the line. Out toward left center. It's going to drop. Come on, win. He's on his way home. He scores. Nomar Garcia Parra with a game. Tying RBI single. Wow. Oh, baby. Some late game drama in this series. I like it. Come on, Eric. All right, it's Eric Hinsky's turn. What can he do? 3-2 count. Garcia Parra is going to be on the move. Soriano from the stretch. The payoff pitch. Running is Garcia Parra. Hinsky strikes out. All right. But we are headed to the bottom of the ninth. Tampa ties the game up. Three runs in the last two innings. And we are knotted up at four. Wow. This has been quite the series so far. I got to say. All right, let's get Mariano in there. Uh, probably the best postseason pitcher or best postseason reliever in uh, baseball history in real life at least let's see if he can duplicate that in OOTP come on Mariano oh no Mariano oh what was it oh man Kenny Lofton this guy man Kenny Lo I, this is this guy is a problem especially late game he what did he walk and then he stole second and then scored on a single oh Damn it, man. Ah, wow. All right, we are headed to game five. Oh, ooh, Oswald got hurt. That's not good for Toronto. It's probably good for us, but... Well, actually, I know, I'd rather play Toronto than Seattle, so maybe it's not good for us. How, how is that series going, by the way? Ooh, that series is going five as well. And they're not going to have Oswald in game five. Oh, man, that is going to bite them in the back. Hey, look, it's our old pal. Oh, wow, he's bounced back nicely in uh, Seattle. Guy whose name I can never pronounce. Mecker, Messer. Ooh, Montreal's in the playoffs. Go Expos. I'm always Team Expos. All right. Let's do it. Winner take all. Game five. Home teams won every game this series. Hopefully that trend continues. Uh, as we are going to have Chris Benson on the mound. Against Sloan Hearts. And I think we'll go same lineup. Ferritech definitely playing better than Roland right now. Hinsky cannot do anything, though. That is the problem. Um, let's see. Maybe even bump. Let's bump Griffey up. Then we're going to do Veritech. Then we're going to bump Hart. We're going to really switch up the uh, the order here. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Game number five. Chris Benson on the mound against Sloan Hart. Back in the trop. Can we get another big start out of Benson? Like I said, this is where he's really going to prove. In fact, this is the kind of start where you prove whether that was a good trade or not. Let's see it, Chris. All right. We are scoreless through two. No hits on either side. Oh, baby, a six spot in the third. Let's go. Oh, I love it. Single after single. Wow. There's a double from Griffey. Single. A bunch of singles, man. Wow. All right. Six runs. I love it. All right. Now you got a lead to work with, Chris. What can you do with it? Seven nothing. And yeah, he is rolling right now. 90 pitches. Oh, baby. Seven scoreless. Another great performance. 0.64 ERA so far in this postseason for Chris. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And if I can, I'd like to not use any of my high leverage relievers this game just to rest them up. Because I think we're probably... I mean, we will have an off day before the start of the next series, but still, I'd rather not use them if I don't have to. So we're just going to get the Mingo up and see if he can close out the series. All right, of course, uh, Lofton makes his way. Yeah, he stole second, I bet. I guarantee it. Single and he stole. Payoff pitch, ball four. All right, so two out walk. It's Richie Sexton's turn. Come on, Domingo. Waiting on the one-two. Here it is. Sexton swings, put up in the air. Towards short center. Win has got it. And we are through eight. Three outs away from moving on to the ALCS for the third straight year. All right, and now Domingo's got a nine-run lead to work with. All right, two down. Fulmer gets the second, but it's off from in at the dish. Here it is, the full count offering in there with a cutter for strike three. And there it is, the Devil Rays are moving on to the ALCS for the third straight year. And I think, I honestly think we've beaten Cleveland all three years in the ALCS. It's like the Twins and the Yankees at this point. Man, all right. Dramatic series, gotta say, that was a very entertaining series. But, all right, and Seattle. Oh. For the third straight year, it is going to be Tampa and Seattle. So, I think literally all three, for the past three years, it's been Cleveland in the first round and Seattle in the second round. I think it's been that every single year. I might have to go through the old videos and look. I know it's been Seattle the last three years, though. I don't forget that. 
But yep, let's see. They won. Uh, they won three to one in game number five. So I guess the Blue Jays didn't really miss Oswald. They didn't Oswald, I should say. They just didn't. Uh, they just didn't hit in that game. I like this. It says return after league championship series. I like that. <laughs> Do we have anyone like that? No, we don't. Nope. Nen's out. No, nope, Nen's out for good. <laughs> All right. Well, that is gonna do it. So hope you guys did enjoy. And uh, thanks for watching. And yep, we'll have the ALCS coming up in the next episode. Another bet with the Mariners. Unbelievable. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy. And I'm out. Peace.